Morning. Morning. Can I ask you a question? Um, this may not seem super relevant for the morning, but do you, do you like do you like Chinese food? Yeah. You like Chinese food? Okay. Well, um, in my very limited experience of uh, Chinese food in China, during the one time that I was in China, I have decided that the Chinese have no idea how to make Chinese food. They, it's the worst thing. And, and what, I, what I discovered is, is that they, the whole foundation of how they make their food is completely different than how we make our Chinese food. It, it's like the whole base flavor is totally different. And so um, what they do, everything, I, I've kind of figured this out, everything that they make is cooked in sort of a fishy, brothy base flavor. And so basically, everything that I ate tasted like this very strange, fishy flavor, all of it. And I ate some really, really weird things. We ate um, uh, steamed whole bone-in sparrows. We ate uh, scorpions. We ate chicken's feet. Uh, and the worst thing, I've got a picture of it, I think, is uh, this thing called thousand-year-old eggs. That once, that, <laughs> that once was a, a chicken's egg right there. But after months and months of doing something to it, it becomes this sort of black, gelatinous, whatever that is. And it is a delicacy there, right? And so their whole base for, for their food is just radically different than here. And um, our Chinese food, as you know, it's kind of all based on, it's like a chicken and oil, right? That's sort of the, everything that we eat in, at our Chinese restaurants. You go to Hong Kong Light, it's kind of a chickeny, oily flavor, no matter what it is that you get. And the reason I say that is that the base that you start with, it kind of determines everything that comes after that. It, it sort of flavors the whole thing. It determines everything. And it's true in cooking. It's true in building houses. It's true in human pyramids. We might have a picture up there. It's basically the foundation determines everything. Well, uh, it's Easter Sunday. Happy Easter to all of you guys. And uh, for those of you that are new here or haven't been here in a long time, I just want to tell you how much it means to us that you would come and spend time with us. It's a really big deal. But it's Easter Sunday, and for all of us that are followers of Jesus, we are celebrating our brains out because we get to celebrate that we got a new base. We got a new foundation for life, and it has changed everything for us. And Man, did we need it. We needed it really, really bad. The Apostle Paul wrote this in the book of Ephesians about all of us. He said this, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin, he said, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He, the devil, is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. And all of us, that's you and I, all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. And by our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But here's the turning point. Here's the Easter message. God, but God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead in our, because of our many sins, he gave us life when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. This is the nutshell, church, of the Easter message for all of us. And what Paul is saying is that there once was a time for all of us where we each tried to build our lives apart from God on a foundation of who knows what, right? Maybe we tried to build um, uh, our connection with God based on our good deeds or our niceness or something like that. We tried to build uh, a, a life, a thriving life, an abundant life on the foundation of things that we, we hoped would hold us. But Paul said that that stuff would never hold up. The things that we tried to build, the foundations that we poured for our lives, he said that stuff will never hold you. And he said that we were living just like the rest of the world. We thought we were just living, but because we lived for ourselves, because we were trying to build our own foundations apart from God, 
we lived in rejection of God. We said no to him and, and it sort of alienated us from him. It kept us far from who he was. And so we need this good news of Easter. We need this, this resurrection story. And I love that verse again. But God is so rich in mercy, Paul writes. And he loved us, you and I, so much that even though we were dead in our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. God loves us so much that he sent Jesus to live and die on our, our, our behalf so that we could have an abundant life. And he took all of our sinness, all of our brokenness, all of our sort of like doing life on our own, and he put it on his shoulders so that we could have just an amazing friendship with God for all of eternity. But he didn't just have eternity in mind. He didn't just have like the end in mind. He actually, Jesus said, I came that you would have abundant life and that you would have it right now. That he wanted us to thrive right now. But he knew that there was only one way that we could actually really experience joy in this life, really experience strength and hope and peace in this life. And it would be through him. It would be through a relationship with Jesus. It would be through the foundation that, that he would build. And here's how I see our lives, you guys. Um, if you can imagine, just imagine sort of like a, a piece of land that it would maybe just be about the size of the property of Thrive right here, okay? So just picture a, a piece of land. Just it's, it's just a blank canvas, right? It's just a field. It's about this size. And I want you to imagine that that property, that piece of land is actually, it represents your life, okay? So that land is your life on earth. And from a pretty early age, um, the building begins of our lives, right? And so at the beginning on this piece of land, uh, they begin to build, and who builds our lives at first? Mom and dad, right? So they begin to build our lives, but pretty soon, we take over the job, and what we're building, like I said, what we're trying to build on this little property is our lives, right? And so we're building our present life and all that it is, and we're building towards our hopes and our dreams and our futures on this thing. And of course, if you're going to build what will become your life, you're gonna to wanna to build on a really, really good foundation. You're gonna to wanna to build on something that will hold us up. Now, of course, before Jesus, before there was Christ, before Jesus entered into our lives personally, we all chose to build on whatever the sturdiest thing is that we could think of. We all decided at some point that this is the thing that could hold me up, right? And so maybe um, for many of us here in America, the sturdiest thing that we can think of to build our, our lives on would be a good financial base, right? We thought if I have a great income, if I have a good nest egg stored up for retirement, if I even can have a little bit of money saved up for my kids after I go, then, I won't have to worry. I won't have any worries about life. I can just kind of live in peace. And of course, that's the message that we get all the time from the guys on TV, right? You know the guys like uh, uh, Edward Jones is one of the guys and Chuck Schwab is one of the guys, Merrill Lynch is one of those guys. And they tell us that if we get financial security, the rest is gravy. The foundation is there and we'll have everything that we need. Maybe for some of us, we decide that we're gonna um, not build on, on uh, a foundation of money, but we're gonna build on a foundation of uh, keeping ourselves healthy. We wanna live for longevity. We wanna have long lives. And so we do everything that we can to be healthy. We eat right, we exercise, we sleep, we do all those, we take the supplements, we do all those things because we feel like if we can be healthy, we can have a good and long life. That's a foundation for some people. Another foundation for lots of us here in America is that we build on the foundation of a thriving family, right? We, we live very kid-centric lives. And so we kind of have decided at some point that we're gonna live in such a way that everything that we do is to protect our children and to see them thrive. And so subconsciously we think if we get our kids into the right sports, if we get them into the right schools, if we get them the right experiences, the right friend group, whatever it is, that if they thrive, if our children thrive, if our family thrives, well then we got it good. After that, everything else is gravy. We've got that foundation in place. Maybe it's your job and your, you know, what you do at work and your upward mobility. I don't know what the foundation is for, for you, but, but we all decided at some point that we were going to build on some foundation and we were hoping that that would uphold us, that it would provide everything that we needed for a good life. And somewhere, I actually believe, and it, it, I think it's subconscious, you guys, but I think at some point, 
we actually believed, somewhere we kind of decided, I think that that thing that I'm basing my life on, I'm hoping that it will provide peace for me. I hope that it will provide meaning for me. I hope that it will provide purpose in my life, that it will give me strength, that it will give me connection. And that's a lot to ask for that base. And I want to just ask you, I don't know what you've built your life on up till this moment, but what if the foundation that you have built your life on, if if it was one of those foundations, what if you discovered that there were some cracks in the foundation? What if you discovered that at some point in life you, 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 you learned that your foundation failed you? Maybe you tried to build your life on the foundation of financial security, and I am not saying that having money is bad. I think it's a great thing. But is our money enough for us to live on? Is it enough to trust as a foundation for our peace? Is it enough to trust as a foundation for our hope? I think that many of us have have thought that if I could just get X amount, that I won't worry anymore. I won't worry about money. I won't worry about my future. I won't worry about my kids. Um, You know, probably many of us in this room today, as we sit here right now, you probably have more money than you did X number of years ago, right? If you're my age, you probably have more money now than you did 10 years ago or 20 years ago. If you're younger, you probably have more money than you did two or three years ago. And back then, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, there might have been a part of you that thought, man, if I could just have X amount more, I wouldn't worry anymore. And yet here we sit with that exact amount of money in our account. And I want to ask you, have you stopped worrying? Do you have peace in life anymore? And we've discovered, you guys, that it doesn't exactly work that way. How many of us have discovered that money can come and go? That sometimes it goes more quickly than it comes. The market fluctuates. Life is expensive. Pandemics hit. All kinds of things happen. And I think if we really looked at it, we would discover that there is no sum of money that can provide the foundation for our life that we really want it to. A foundation for peace, a foundation for joy, a foundation for strength and hope and all of those things. Maybe you pursued health, you want a long life, you wanna look good, all of those things. And then you sort of discovered along the way that no matter what you do, sickness happens. No matter what you do, injury happens. And probably the worst news of all, we get old, right? You're getting old. I, uh, I had a, a family friend of mine uh, back in the day, and uh, he and I had completely lost touch with each other, and he found me on Facebook like a year ago, after many years, and he just Facebooked me, and he said, you look like your dad. And I'm like, oh, oh. It's like, <laughs> it's so painful, right? Apparently, age happens, right? And if we build on the foundation of health, we will discover that our health will eventually fail us and we will be sort of disenchanted by that, right? If you have based all your hope on your kids thriving, your family thriving, how many of you guys know that no matter how hard you try to orchestrate an amazing life for your children, they still suffer? You can try to protect them from that but they will still suffer. You want your kids to make great decisions, but they make dumb decisions. You want your kids to serve the Lord, and yet many of us have watched our kids walk away from God. It's not a secure foundation, right? We wanna protect our kids, and I say all of that stuff, not to bum you out. I say that just to say, church, there isn't a foundation in the world that can hold up There isn't anything that you can build on other than Jesus that can deliver to you what you really want, all that is truly important to you. There is nothing that we can build on like Jesus himself. And here's the thing, whatever it is that we lean on and whatever foundation we build on other than the death and resurrection of Jesus, it's the very foundation itself that will become the place of our greatest stress the very foundation itself. And the reason is, is because we will know somewhere in the back of our mind, in the deep recesses of our heart, we will know that that foundation cannot hold. We know it. And that's why we worry. And so our blood pressure and our sleepless nights and our involuntary ruminating about the things that we worry about, they all tell us that the foundation that we're leaning on will give way at some point. It isn't enough to hold us. And so I just want to ask you, what do you worry about in your life? What do you fear? Do you 
Do you have a lack of purpose? Do you need more hope? Do you need more peace? How is the old foundation doing in your life? Because Jesus invites us to a brand new and totally different foundation. It's the foundation of his life. Now remember our plot of land that is our lives? Right, So we have the old foundation that we've been building on and we've probably been putting bricks up and doing all kinds of building. And then here's Jesus and he walks onto the property of our heart. He walks onto the property of our lives and he says, would you come over here? Would you follow me over here? Just a few feet where we could build together on a brand new foundation, where we could build a foundation based on my life. Jesus said some unbelievable, incredible things during his short time on earth. One of the most amazing things that he ever said was this. In John 14, he said this, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He said, there is life in me. I will be a foundation for your life that will hold you up. I love how he talks about making all things new. In the book of Revelation, uh, uh, Jesus said this, I am making all things new. Behold, watch, I will make you all new. And Paul writes this about Jesus in 2 Corinthians chapter five. He said this, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone has said, I wanna build my life on your foundation, I want you to be Lord of my life. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, that's us. The old is gone and the new is here. Do you hear resurrection joy in this verse? Or to put it in house terms, to put it in foundation terms, uh, Jesus taught this in the book of Matthew. He said this, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain came down. What is that? That's the the worries of life, the troubles of life, the challenges of life. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine, this invitation, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand that is every other foundation, and the rain came down, and the streams rose, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, which is our life, and it fell with a great crash. And some of us are old enough to have experienced a crash in our lives because we were leaning on the wrong foundation. But this Easter invitation of Jesus is hope for every one of us. It's a new foundation. It's a new home. It's a new life. It's new purpose. It's new peace for us that will withstand every storm of life. There would be nothing that could happen to you that you will not be able to stand up to when your foundation is on Jesus. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And if you've built on a foundation other than Jesus, Jesus is saying, I want you to stop your worrying. And he stands on the property of your life and he says, come and follow me. Come and watch me build. Come and let me lead you. Let me show you how to live in a way that is free and joyful and hopeful. Let me give you your purpose for life. Let me teach you my ways. Let me share with you my wisdom. Follow me. All you have to do is put down your tools of building on that own founda- or your old foundation and let me build in your life. And I know that many of us have done that. I know that lots of us in this room have already uh, 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 made that decision and we've asked Jesus to build the foundation. But for those of you that have been a Christian for a long time, for those of you that feel like you've been doing this thing for a while, I uh, I wanna talk to you for a second. Um, And the reason is, is that there is a challenge for those of us that have been hanging with the Lord for a really long time. And and so for, for, for us that have been walking with God for a while, we actually have two houses on our property, right? We've got the old house, the old foundation, and then just like 20 feet away, we've got this new foundation and this new thing that Jesus has been building in our life. So we have two properties, right? So we've left the old ways and we've sort of embraced Jesus in the new way. But... The storms come in life. Things get challenging. And that old foundation is just just a few feet away. We just see it right there in our heart. And how easy would it be to go, man, you know, Jesus is awesome. He's great. But 
I could sure, I'd love to like build a little bit more on that foundation. It'd be nice to have, you know, maybe like a plan B in place. And so we start building again on the foundation of our finances or our kids or whatever it is that you have put your trust into in the past. And at the moment that we do that, you guys, at that very moment, we begin to lean on something once again that does very little other than causes us to stress and to worry. Why? Because we're leaning on something again that will not hold us, right? And so for those of us that have been walking with Jesus, this time of Easter, this resurrection time, it is not just a time to celebrate. It's not just a time to like glorify God and go, oh, God, you're so amazing. But it is such a good reminder. It is a wake-up call for those of us that have been walking with the Lord for a long time to say, Oh man, I only want you. My hope is in you alone. Money's great, kids are great, looking good is great, all that stuff is fine. But where's my hope? Where's my trust? It is in resurrection power. Um, I, 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 uh, I, I don't know what you guys uh, would say about this, but you know those, like, those little things in life that really, really satisfy you? Like, just think for a second of like, what are the little things in your life that just bring a lot of satisfaction? For me, a really good cup of coffee, uh, especially after I haven't had coffee for more than two hours, that is really choice, right? So a great cup of coffee is really good. For me, um, just getting into bed with newly clean sheets. I love that, so, so good. But probably one of the, the most satisfying things for me, probably by a long shot, are those moments when I get to say to Molly, I told you so. <laughs> oh, that is so choice, it is so good. I'm really, there is nothing quite like that because she's like really smart so I don't get to do it very often but oh it's so good which of course makes me like really fun to be married to <laughs> right but we're going to read the Easter story as I wrap up here and what we're going to see is that Jesus had this ultimate I told you so and it's so cool it's so powerful so here is the Easter story recorded in the book of Matthew early on Sunday morning as the new day was dawning Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb and suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord had came down from heaven and rolled aside the stone and sat on it and his face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow and the guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. And then the angel spoke to the women, the two Marys, and he said, do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead just as he said it would happen. Come and see where his body was lying and now go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. He is going and he is going ahead of you to Galilee and you will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The angel says to them. And then the women ran quickly from the tomb and they were very frightened but also filled with great joy and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him and they grasped his feet and they worshiped him. And then Jesus said, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and there they will see me. This is sort of the ultimate, I told you so, because no one expected Jesus to rise from the dead after he was crucified, no one. It wasn't on anybody's grid. Even though Jesus tried to tell his disciples, guys, I'm gonna be crucified, I'm gonna suffer, I'm gonna be crucified, but three days later, don't worry, I will rise from the dead. There was nobody kind of coming to this tomb saying, well, maybe he'll be there, maybe he won't. Nobody expected this. And it's kind of interesting because here and now, when we celebrate Easter, we celebrate Easter with joy and flowers and fun and all that stuff. You know how they celebrated the first Easter with terror and bewilderment and dismay and a little bit of joy that they didn't think that they could trust. They were freaked out. They had no idea what was going to happen. And they met Jesus and they were, they were just shocked and they were overjoyed. And the joy for us, you guys, is this for any of us that would put our hope in him, for any of us that would build on the foundation of his life, and for any of us that would say, show me how to live, be the Lord of my life, direct my ways, we also joined him 
the scripture says, in his crucifixion and in his resurrection. And so in Romans 5, Paul writes this, for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. And Jesus is looking at, he looked at those disciples and he looks at us today and he says, I told you that I would do this and I did it. And there will come a day for all of us, for every one of us, there is an appointed number of days. There will come a day when you will die and I will die, every one of us. And on that day, if we have taken up Jesus' invitation to come over here and build on his foundation, if we have taken him up on that invitation, we will experience our own resurrection and we will probably experience the same shock in that moment when we see Jesus face to face and we go, I, I, I can't believe that it's all true. I, I put my trust in you. I live my life for you. And, and it all came to pass. Everything that you said you would do, you did. And I just imagine Jesus with a big smile on his face saying, Kevin, I told you that I would. I told you that I was faithful. I told you that I wouldn't let you down. I did everything that I promised to you. Every little thing. Everything. You could trust me. And so on that big plot of land, that is your life. I don't know what you've been building over here. I don't know what's on that foundation that you built on that you were hoping would hold up, but you knew that there was cracks. But today, on this Easter Sunday, as we see the risen Jesus who did everything that he said he would do, the invitation for all of us is to put down the tools that we were using to frenetically build an old life that were apart from, was apart from him and to say, I'm just gonna receive your resurrection power. I want to build on your foundation, the foundation of who you are, because we remember today that he really did rise from the dead. He really did do that. And so he will change our lives in the same way that he changed the course of history for millions and millions and millions of people. He says, behold, watch, I will make your life new. That's the resurrection story. That's the Easter story. Amen? Why don't we stand up? So if you are, um, if you're new here to Thrive, the, fin- the, the service isn't over just yet. Uh, because we, um, we always, we, we make a habit of um, taking time to allow God to touch our hearts because we, we believe the Bible says that wherever two or more people are hanging out together in, in God's name, that, that he said, I am present. I am very much there. I'm in the room with you. And um, this morning, this, this talk about the resurrection is really all about an invitation. It's an invitation to leave something on your property And it's an invitation to move over to this place where Jesus is, where he's inviting you to come and to put all of your hope and all of your trust. Go do the other things. That's fine. But who do you live for? Where does your strength come from? Where is there a a secure foundation for your life? That's the invitation. And so um, I'm going to pray and we're gonna pray together for a, just a, a minute or two. And if you would be willing, um, I know that this would be probably different uh, as an experience for some of you that are new here or maybe new to church at all, but I'm just gonna um, ask everybody to just kinda close your eyes and just kinda just be for a moment with, with Jesus here. And I really don't want you uh, looking around or just getting distracted by what else might be happening in the room. Um, but this is like a, it's a moment. It's a moment in your life because Jesus is here and he's inviting you to come and to follow him. He's inviting you to um, just lay down the, the heavy tools and the hard work of building on a foundation that won't hold your life and to put your trust in him. And the reason why I want you guys to close your eyes, one of them is that um, if you are a person that is sort of saying, man, I have been building on the wrong foundation. I want to build my life on your life, Jesus. I want 
real hope. I want real peace. I would just ask you um, in this moment to just like raise up your hand for like a nanosecond so I can see that you're doing that kind of heart decision in your life right now. It's good. Thank you guys. Good work. Good work. It's a big deal. And so, um, Lord Jesus, thank you for who you are. Thank you that you love us so much that you would come to earth, that you would live a, a, a human life, a very challenging human life, that you would die a difficult and terrible death on our behalf so that we can live freely, we can live lightly, we can live hopefully, we can live peacefully. And uh, whoever we are, whether you're a longtime Christian or a new believer, whatever it is, Lord, we together, we just say we're, we're wanting to build on the foundation of your life alone. We, we turn away from putting our trust and our hope in any lesser thing than you. We receive your grace for us, your kindness towards us. Teach us how to live, Lord Jesus. Let us follow you. Thank you. And I just hear God saying that he is a brilliant architect, that um, he is the builder, he's the architect, he's the builder. He has supplies coming that you had no idea that those... Those things could come from those places. I see like big, you know, just granite slabs and marble and, and just the the uh, just the splendor of God, guys. When we say, yeah, I want to build on, on this foundation of you, then God comes in with more than you can think, ask, or imagine to build. Mm -hmm. That it's not, again, based on your own effort, what you can get, the supplies that you can come up with to build your life. He comes in and takes over. He does. He takes over. So I just bless some of you that have been thinking like you just got to figure out how to build this thing, you know, how to make a life that counts, that matters. And the promise is that God will follow up. He'll follow up. He's a great builder. Yeah. So, Lord... Jesus, we bless you on this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday. We love you so much. Lord, I pray for your blessing on every person that is in this room. I pray that you would take good care of them, that you would strengthen them, that you would give them hope, that you would give them peace and joy. Lord, bless their families. Bless their work. Bless the purpose that you have for them. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. if you have... Uh, yes. Thank you, guys. Yeah. If you um, made sort of a, a commitment or a decision for God for the first time or the first time in a long time, would you grab me just so I can give you a hug and pray for you real quick? Otherwise, we've got food downstairs, drinks downstairs, Easter egg hunt out, uh, outside. And most importantly, we have ministry team up here that will pray for you. If you need healing, if you want some encouragement, if you want to share this decision you've made or next steps, these guys are here ready to pray for you. Let's get some prayer this morning too. Have a great Easter. Love okay. you guys. Bless you.